Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you for joining me. I am Evangelist Smith. I'm coming on today real quick. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm coming on real quick. I'm Evangelist Smith, as I mentioned, and we're going to get ready to um, just bring the word real quick. It won't be long. Praying everyone is having a blessed week. First off, let me say, God, whatever he speaks through me, whatever God speaks through me, I shall say, I know many do not like what I say. Many don't like me. But I'm not here for anybody to like me. I'm not. I'm here to do what God has called me to do. And whatever it is that God tells me to preach, I do my best. And my husband and I do our best to live by the word. So let's go into this word. I want to first start with James 4, 17. Actually, that's where we're coming from. James chapter 4, verse 17. And it reads, so whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin. Let's read it again. So whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin. So what does that tell us? When we know what to do and we know the right thing to do, but we choose not to do it, you just sin against the Lord. We live in a world now where it's, I can do what I want. I'm whatever age, I can do what I want. It doesn't matter what I do. That's a lie from Satan. The devil wants you to feel that way. Remember, Satan doesn't love you. He doesn't care about you. He just wants your soul. He wants you to dwell in hell with him. And his demons. Be mindful, and especially right now, I, I, my heart goes out to the young people. Be mindful, everyone. Me, you, definitely young people, young people, teenagers, of what you do. We know the right thing to do, but we choose not to do it. There's so much disobedience going on with these children, disrespect. It's to the point that children don't want to listen. They want to kill their parents. Even if you take a phone, they're killing grandparents. But let me let you know something. Not just the older people, definitely my young people. Because we're, we're going off. We're dying off little by little. And God is bringing the next generation up behind us. Young, young people need to get it together and realize it doesn't matter how grown you are, number one. I, us who are parents are always older than you. And you're never, never too old to get a smack down. Understand that. Okay? Because God do believe in discipline. Because the Bible said, if you spare the rod, it's not you spoil your child, but you hate your child. And young people know to do right. You know not to follow the crowd. You know to listen to me or me, but you choose not to. You allow Satan to just get in your mind and all these thoughts and try to control the house and trying to do what you want to try to go out and smoke and having sex and drinking and clubbing and all this stuff. You know better. Let me tell you guys something. Wake up. Because the same way older people are dying, young people are dying like crazy because of sin. Just the other day I seen on my email news, a young girl died. She collapsed in high school. Collapse. You think she knew she was going to go to school and be gone? No. We have to be ready. Because we know not the hour for when God is coming. Those of us living right for God, keep on going. It's hard, yes. The Bible didn't say it was going to be easy. But the Bible do say we have Jesus, we have the Holy Spirit, we have our Father. We have the Bible that guides us and instructs us. We have God that comforts us. He said we can cast our cares upon him. So even though this walk may feel like, oh my gosh, it's just good things, yes, and then there's those bad things. Stand strong. Stand strong to you because our reward is coming. And remember, we know not the hour for when we go. Let us not sin, especially consciously, by doing what we want to do, doing what is wrong, because the Bible says here, for him it is sin. If you choose not to do what's right. We know right from wrong. God also gives us a choice and free will to make the right choice 
to do the right things, but we are want to live, we want to live in content and do what we want to do. Allow Satan to fool our mind. One thing I just keep hearing, especially for my children, is I'm grown. I can do what I want to do. You right, you might be grown. And I can do what you want to do. And as I said, you want to do what you want to do up at my husband and I house. You can go out there and do what you choose. I will pray over you. May God bless you. Because in the end, we all have to face, we all have to face God for what we do. And we tend to forget that. Yes, we got those that say there is no God. I don't believe in them. Blah, blah, blah. Say, That's fine. That's your belief. I just would hate to say when you die and you see that God is real, it's too late then. And let me tell you, especially those who are followers of Christ. You know to do right, but you choose to go do your own thing or First, you follow God. Do you want to go back into sin? I just did a Bible study on Sodom and Gomorrah. When Lot's wife looked back, she wanted to look back. Not because of just curiosity, but look back because she wanted to see all that. She missed that already. All that sin. You want to go back? Or you want to sit there and not listen to God? And especially when God bring people to you and tell you, be obedient, stop doing this, or God is going to do this, his wrath is going to come upon you, his anger is going to come upon you, you still choose to go follow Satan, because the Bible said, if you're not following Jesus Christ, you're following Satan, so if you choose to continue to follow Satan, it's a sin, and your consequence of that is death, living in hell for the rest of your life, in torment, it's not worth it. It's not worth, oh, I want to do what I want to do here on this earth. I'm going to enjoy myself, blah, blah, And then go to hell, living in torment, and going in the lake of fire, being burned for the rest of eternity. It's not worth it. You stand strong, stand strong to the end. Don't follow the crowd. Who cares what they think or say about you? They'll talk about you while you're alive. And they're going to talk about you while you're dead. Let me tell you. I get a lot of talk about. And in the end, I'm like, well, good. I must be doing something right. Thank you for talking. I'm on your mind. They talked about Jesus. And they treated Jesus bad. But Jesus kept on pushing because he knew his mission. And you have a mission. We go out there and win souls for Jesus Christ. Don't worry about the naysayers. Don't worry about the left and the right. And as I'm talking to you, I'm talking to myself. Because there's a lot of times, I too, I got things on my Facebook that be said, or things on my, my, my channels that be said. And you know, it's, I don't, I'm at the point, I don't care, because people are going to say anything. As long as I'm doing right in the eyes of God is what matters. Because you guys are not my God, and nobody is your God but one God, and that's up in heaven. Our God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember that. God is your Father. Jesus Christ is your Father. He's there with you. And even when it's tempting to want to do wrong, just remember, God is watching. Stay firm, people. Stay firm, children of God. Don't give up. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to come this morning before you. I pray, God, that you may continue to guide us. You may continue to walk with us. But give us the strength as we walk and help us to not be afraid to do right before you. Help us, Lord, not to worry about the naysayers or look to the left or look to the right. But to stand firm in your word and stand firm in prayer as we walk this walk. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. One more thing. If there's anyone who want to be saved or you want to rededicate your life, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Say, Dear Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. I accept you. I believe in you. And I pray to live righteously before you. Thank you. For forgiving me of my sins. Come into my heart. 
In Jesus' name, amen. And if you prayed that prayer, know that God has forgiven you totally of everything and given you a new start and new life. And the Bible says that if one come before him, the angels in heaven rejoice. So if you accept the hand that we dedicate your life, I rejoice with you. Stand firm. And remember, when you took that prayer, you took take it serious. Get into a good Bible faith big church or get you a good Bible. Just love on God. Pray before him. Keep him first in all that you do. May God be with you all. Be blessed. Remember, so whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it for him, it is sin. James 4, verse 17.